Good day, students. Welcome to MathWithServe.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 101 to 105 of the ELM EPT um, review question for geometry. Don't forget to visit our website at MathWithServe.com for access to a wide variety of math tutorials ranging from Algebra 1 to Calculus. All right, let's take a look at problem 101. It says in the figure above, what is the uh, value of x? All right, so in order for us to figure out what x is, <coughs> we need to figure out this value, the value of this angle right here, angle y. In order for us to figure out what angle y is, we know this is 90, we have to figure out the value of this angle, angle z. So using this triangle, we can find y, z first, and then find y using these two angles, and then ultimately we can find the value of angle z, okay? All right, so let's start off by finding <coughs> z so how do we find z we're going to use the triangle angle sim theorem the triangle angle sim theorem states that the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees all right so if we want to find angle z we're going to um, add these two angles and subtract from 180 all right so z is equal to 180 minus the sum of the other two angles which are 90 See this right angle right here? That means it's 90 degrees, okay? That's the right angle, 90 plus 35. And then if you go ahead and compute the difference, uh, 90 plus 35 is 125. So if you compute 180 minus 125, um, your answer is going to be, let's see, 10, 5, 7, 2, 5, 55 degrees. So angle Z, is 55 degrees okay so this is 55 let's erase that <coughs> change it with its new measure which is 55 okay now that we know those two angles on the straight line um we're going to use this information we can find what y is okay so what is the sum of angles on a straight line using the linear pair postulate we know that um if you have a sum of two or more angles on a straight line they all add up to 180 degrees all right so next thing we're going to do is we're going to find y find y now since 55 and this angle 90 degrees add up to i mean since 55 90 and y add up to 180 uh, y is simply going to be the sum of these two minus 180 since they all add up to 180 okay so y is simply going to be 180 the sum of all three angles minus the sum of the other two, which is 55 plus. Now, what's the measure of this angle right here? So it's the right angle is 90 degrees, okay? So that's going to yield um, <coughs> 180 minus 55 plus 90. 55 plus 90. If you add it together, you get 5 for 145 degrees. So 145 degrees minus, I mean 180 minus 145 degrees will give us the measure of angle Y. So 10 minus 5 is 5, 7 minus 4 is 3. So we have 35 degrees. So angle Y is 35 degrees. All right, so what can we see here? What you notice is that based on if you look at these two angles, they are similar, okay, because of angle-angle um, similarity postulate. If two angles of two distinct triangles are congruent, then those two triangles are similar, which automatically means that corresponding angles are congruent. So we can automatically conclude based on similarity postulate, AA similarity postulate, that angle X has to be equal to this corresponding angle D, which is 55, okay? <clears throat> now let's assume that you don't know, you do not know the um, AA similarity postulate for triangles. You can still figure out what angle X is. If you use your basic um, geometry um, theorems, you can figure out what X is. The triangle angle sim theorem we can use there to find out what X is. X is simply the sum of all three angles, which is 180, minus the sum of the other two, which is 35 plus 90, okay? And then when you work this out, <clears throat> you get 180 minus 125 
and your final answer is 55 degrees. So you can clearly see that our answer is option letter D. All right, let's take a look at problem number <clears throat> 102. It says in the figure above, L1 is parallel to L2, and Y is 127. So anytime you're given the value of an angular measure in a problem, please apply it to the figure, okay? So since Y is 127, without wasting time, I'm going to label the value of angle Y as 127. We're asked to find the value of X. Now, anytime you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, um, <clears throat> corresponding angles are congruent, all right? Uh, so this angle right here, angle Y, um, is corresponding to this angle right here. So if this is 127, guess what? This angle right here is 127 also. Now, these two angles are supplements of each other. They add up to 180 degrees. So if they both add up to 180 degrees in order to find X, what are we going to do? We're going to take uh, the sum of both of them. So X is basically equal to the sum of both of them, 180, minus one of them, which is 127, since they're a linear pair. Okay? So if you subtract 127 from 180, you're going to end up with 53 degrees. All right, so we can clearly see that option C is our answer. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at problem 103. Uh, it says in, in the figure above, CD is parallel to AB. What is the measure of angle ACB? So if CD is parallel to AB, that means this line is parallel to this line right here. Now, what is this angle right here? Okay, ACB, what is that measure? Now, if you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, these interior angles right here are known as alternate interior angles. Okay, so if you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so <clears throat> let's write that down. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, this is our transversal here, CV. Um, alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay? <clears throat> alternate interior angles are congruent, and um, even corresponding angles. Corresponding angles um, are congruent also. All right? So keep that in mind. So since um, angles um, DCV is congruent to angle A, uh, angle A, A, um, DC, we know that this angle right here is going to be 55 degrees, okay? So let's go ahead and write that down. Angle X is uh, 55 degrees. All right, is that what we were asked to find? We we're asked to find angle ACB, so this is what we're going to look for right here. We're going to look for angle ACB. Let's call that Y. Now we can use the triangle angle stem theorem, keeping it in mind the fact that this is 55 to figure out angle Y. Okay? What is the triangle angle stem theorem? Well, it tells us that the sum of angles in a triangle is 180. So Y is going to be the sum of all three angles minus the sum of the other two, which is 65 plus X. Well, we know X is 55. All right, and then when we work uh, this out, we end up with 180 minus 120. And then our final answer is 60 degrees. That's the measure of angle Y. And angle Y is angle ACB, as you can see here. All right, let's take a look at problem 104. It says if A is less than B, which point in the figure above could have coordinates A comma B? R, S, T, U, or V, all right? So this is a very abstract problem because we do not have concrete values for our coordinates, but we are expected to compare them. So how can we get around this, this uh, situation, this constraint or uh, difficulty? Well, what you want to do whenever you're asked to make comparisons with abstract values, you always want to assign concrete numbers to them based on the given information. Okay, so this is one, 
I want to find the coordinates of all the points, all right? So what is the coordinates of angle R? What we're going to do, let's go ahead and draw some lines in here. <clears throat> Make my line pretty skinny. Got it. Okay. So <clears throat> let's do the first line. So I'm going to trace this down to my x-axis and my y-axis to find my coordinates of R. And then for V, trace it to my Y. We do not have values here, but I'm going to just make a, an educated guess, okay? Make an, a, a logical approximation. And that should make it easy for us to really determine the, the only set of coordinates that can satisfy the condition where the X coordinate is in fact, um, where the X coordinate is in fact smaller than the Y coordinate, all right? So if I can get my my um, <clears throat> line to continue functioning. Okay, so the last line I'm going to draw is U. All right, like that. Okay, so we don't know the value of all these coordinates because we don't have numbers there. So what are we going to do? We're going to insert reasonable values um, for our coordinates that we do not know. For example, between zero and one, what is a reasonable number? What can we na name this? We can call it one half, right? That's a, a logical um, approximation. And then here, it looks a little bit high. Uh, how about we call that um, three? Okay, call that three. A number that's much bigger than one. We can call T, we can call that two. And then we can call this value right here, um, how about we call it one and a, th and a third, okay? One and a third. Any number between one and two will work. Okay, I'm just using an approximation. And then um, this one right here, we can call this two, we can call this right here three. And then this one right there, we can call it two and a half because it's between two and three. And then how about we call this one down here, let's see. Uh, we can call it negative one. Is it about the same? Yeah, it's okay. Let's call it negative one. Oh, we still have another one down here. We can call that one <clears throat> negative one half. And then this one, we can call it positive one half. All right. Okay, so all these values I put on the axis are to help me assign concrete coordinates to our points. So let's start with point R. What are the coordinates of point R? The X coordinate is one half, the Y coordinate is three. Point S, right here. The X coordinate is two and a half, the Y coordinate is one half. It's just an, an approximation, all right? U, the X coordinate is three, the Y coordinate is negative one half. T, I don't know where we put T, let's put T over here. The x coordinate is 2, the y coordinate is 0, since you're sitting right on the x axis. V, the x coordinate is 1 and a third, the y coordinate is negative 1. So, what this problem is asking us to do is to compare the x and the y values of each coordinate and see which the one where the x coordinate is less than the y coordinate. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do the comparison. We're going to have the points. Um, eight points are going to be in a b format and then the next column we're going to ask ourselves is a less than b that's a question all right so i'm going to make a little table here so that i can compare my coordinates in an organized fashion all right so first set let's go in alphabetical order okay we have r r is what one half comma three, S is what? Two and a half, comma one half. T is um, two comma zero. U, U is um, three comma negative one half. And then V is one one third comma negative one. All right, so which one is the first coordinate bigger than, smaller than the second? Let's look at this. Is one half less than three? Absolutely. So we can clearly see that our answer is option letter A. 
Okay. Well, let's look at the other ones just to make no for sure. Is two and a half smaller than one half? No. Nope. Is two smaller than zero? No. Nope. All right, and then is three less than negative one half? No, three is much bigger. Is one and a third less than negative one? The answer is no. So we see the only situation where the x coordinate is smaller than the y coordinate is point R. There are other ways to do this, which are pretty abstract involving um, approximating distances visually. Those, those methods are a little, a little bit too complicated. So that's why it's good to make reasonable assignments to your abstract points so you can compare them with ease okay so that's why i use this strategy to solve this problem all right let's take a look at problem 105 that is also another example that highlights the strategy i told you earlier it says x is the coordinate of point p shown on the number line above which of the following has coordinate negative 2x so what i said earlier was when you were uh, comparing points that are distances that are abstract, you try and make a reasonable assignment, a reasonable concrete assignment to that abstract value. We're doubling the distance of point P, um, the x coordinate of point P. So this is point P right here. It doesn't have a number on it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to think of a number that's really close to 1, but bigger than 0. How about 0 0.9? Can we say um, x is equal to 0 0.9 is that a good guess absolutely makes makes sense okay but we are asked to find the value of negative 2x so what we'll simply do is multiply this value by negative 2 all right you see how easy it is when you give yourself a concrete reference we can carry out computations with that um, approximate value you're using so if you multiply negative 2 by 0 0.9 you get negative 1.8 all right negative 1.8 now, um, let's see, which of these values is a good, um, well, before I go into that, let me show you this multiplication real quick, because some of you might be wondering how I got that. So if you multiply 0 0.9 by 2, 2 times 9 is 18, and 2 times 0 is 0, so you have 0, 1, 8. So how many decimal point? how many numbers do you have, um, behind a decimal point in these two values. We have only one digit, non-zero digit, so we're going to move our decimal point up once. So that's why the answer of this product is 1.8. Okay, and in the negative, you just append it right there. So let's now look at the numbers we have here. Which of these letters is a reasonable um, approximation of this value, negative 1.8? Negative 1.8 is close to negative 2, but uh, further away from negative 1. It's between negative 1 and negative 2, but much closer to negative 2. So we're looking at this boundary right here, between negative 2 and negative 1. The two options we have, eliminate A, B, and E, are B and C. Which of these do you think is negative 1.8? 1. Negative 1. 1.8 is closer to negative 2 than it is to negative 1. So our answer is option letter B. So B is our answer for the problem. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of this review series and other great math tutorials. And please post a comment to let us know what you think about this presentation or if there are any questions that you would like us to make tutorials for, um, please share that with us. Thanks again for watching and visit our website at mathgoodserve.com. Have a wonderful day.